It's the early 1300s. Since the fall of Rome six centuries ago, Europe has been behind the rest of the world. In the East, the Mongols have created the largest land empire ever known to man. Europe remains divided, recently ravaged by the Black Plague. Little do they know that this catastrophic disease will in fact start a period of cultural abundance, first in Italy and then spreading all over the rest of Europe, a movement that changes our lives even today. This was known as the Renaissance. As the Renaissance began to take hold in Florence, the Florentines needed a leader of the arts. These leaders turned out to be the Medici family, the godfathers of the Renaissance. It all began with Cosimo de' Medici, a son of a banker and one of the earlier converts to humanism. Upon his father's death, he inherited the banking system and represented the middle, class, middle and lower classes of Florence. After a brief period of exile, he returned to Florence to hold most of the finance and wealth in Italy, as well as Florence. <clears throat> he would also begin to be a patron for such iconic artists as Donatello and Brunelleschi. Yep. Enzo de' Medici, the grandson of Cosimo, became known to, as Il Magnifico to Florentines because of the way that he ushered in a cultural golden age in Florence. <clears throat> Neither a skilled political or military leader, he led the constitutional republic that was Florence tyrannically. However, what he lacked in those leadership skills, he made up for by being a patron of the arts to such great our artists and sculptors as Da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Botticelli. The Renaissance signified a revival of Greco-Roman learning and a representation in art of the experience of the individual and the natural world. After the fall of Constantinople, brought Greek learning to Europe. The most well-known artist of the Renaissance was Leonardo da Vinci who painted such works as the Mona Lisa, the Virgin of the Rocks, and the Last Supper. His works revolutionized the ideas of light and dark in art, and also challenged conventional ideas of perspective in works such as the Vitruvian Man. The major sculptor of the Renaissance was Michelangelo, who created works such as the Statue of the David, the Pietà, and the Sistine Chapel. What is the significance of the Renaissance to world history? Well, it brought Europe out of the Dark Ages and set the stage for important movements such as the Enlightenment and the Scientific Revolution, which along with the Renaissance constitute the inspiration for modern Western thought. The Renaissance brought along several advances in the scientific world, especially in the fields of medicine, anatomy, and astronomy. Perhaps one of the most well-known scientific figures of the Renaissance would be Galileo Galilei. The son of a musician, Galileo grew to become an extremely accomplished scientist and inventor. His genius helped build foundation and lay a solid infrastructure in the broad field of science. Galileo Galilei was, was, was an astonishing man. He was very astonishing. Many recognized him for his work in astronomy, but few recognized his prowess as an inventor. Have you ever heard of the thermoscope? It's a fascinating device capable of explaining fluctuations in temperature in an easily visible manner. The mechanisms behind this apparatus are quite simple. It's only a matter of buoyancy. As temperature changes, levels of liquid will rise and fall. And guess who invented this remarkable device? Ronald Reagan. <laughs> More well known about Galileo is his defense supporting the iconoclastic Copernicus in his theories of heliocentrism. Although now the belief of heliocentrism has been proven to be true and accepted by almost all, in the 16th century the situation was much different. Did you uh, wake up? What are we doing right now? Galileo. Galileo. Okay, um, Galileo was an iconoclast. He was a renegade. 
he was a maverick. Although Galileo was a brave man, he paid for his brazen actions. His publishings constantly irked the church, and in 1632, the church brought him to Rome for inquisition for his brief book, Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems, a supposedly unbiased discussion regarding heliocentrism. Galileo would be sent to trial, which resulted in a house arrest for the remainder of his life. In the end, Galileo died a proud man. Punished for refusing to retract his findings, he taught a valuable lesson to the scientific community. Don't publish your findings until you're dead. The concept of a Renaissance man is an individual with expertise in many different areas of study, like Galileo. While this term can be applied to anyone in history, it is most often applied to the great thinkers of the Renaissance. Niccolò Machiavelli was considered by many a true Renaissance man. He was a political scientist, writer, philosopher, and a... Diplomat. Diplomat! Uh, <laughs> as a philosopher, he was a uh, realist, which contrasted the beliefs of Aristotle and Plato, who were idealists. He wrote Il Principe, which is his most famous book, which compares hereditary rulers and rulers that have just consolidated their power, and also explains how rulers should rule. Machiavelli is a realist, and therefore believes that the ends always justify the, justify the means. So he said that violence was okay, which was mocked by the church, who believed <laughs> in yes. kindness and being nice to people. Um, People thought that Il Principe has very good ideas, so his the book spread at mock speed. <laughs> Machiavelli lived in Florence, where he was in charge of the civilian militia. Uh, he won a couple battles, but was eventually defeated by the Medici, who had been exiled 70 years before. He was tortured and eventually released by the Medici, and lived out the rest of his life in his villa, continuing to write books. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard of Beethoven, Mozart, and Bach, but no one ever talks about Thomas Tallis, one of the most influential English composers ever. He rose from no formal education to granting, being granted a monopoly on music paper making. He wrote in the, the style called Lo Stile Famigliare, which is a Renaissance style where each syllable has a separate tone and there are four or five different parts being played at the same time. So, it sounds something like this. <laughs> or something a little more harmonic, like this. Um, his most two most famous pieces are Lamentations of Jeremiah and... Top six. Stem in Albrium, oh. which has 40 parts and was written for five choirs of eight people each. Thank you for listening to our documentary on... Yeah, Renaissance, uh, we hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>
Famous sculptor Michelangelo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Machiavelli wrote the prince. That book did not sell four or five cents. Italy, known for his pizza. Back then it was the Mona Lisa. My, Da Vinci made the last supper. Too bad it didn't last through supper. Galileo looked to the sky. And geocentricity just wanna fly.